What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So I get all kinds of questions asking which rendering program they should buy, which rendering program is better, other things like that. I always struggle with answering this question because the answer for one person might not be the same for another person. Every person has different needs when they're creating 3D renderings. And so I can't say just blanketly like one program is better than the other because some are better fits than others for different people. So what I thought that I'd do is I'd create this video today in order to help you understand some of the things that you should think about before you pick a rendering program. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is sponsored by MSI and more specifically the MSI WS66 workstation. So MSI has been a leader in the gaming space for years and they now provide workstations for content creators and 3D professionals as well. So um, the MSI WS66 is my second MSI laptop. So I also had the MSI GS65 as well. So I've been using MSI laptops for a while. I love the portability that they bring. What I really like about these workstations is they're really designed to provide maximum performance while still being portable. So this laptop has a 15.6 inch touchscreen, an i9-11900H CPU, and an NVIDIA Quadro RTX A3000 GPU, all packed into a 4.63 pound, 0.71 inch thick chassis. Note that you can also get a version with an upgraded A5000 graphics card as well. So what it does is it's really portable and it allows me to take this with me on the go, but I can still run the higher end programs like the D5s and the Lumions and other things like that. Wireless capacity has been upgraded to Wi-Fi 6E, meaning you can enjoy a great wireless experience on the recently opened 6 gigahertz band. So they've also included a 99.9 .9 watt hour battery inside the unit, which is the largest battery size allowed by the FAA without additional airline approval. So they're really trying to maximize that battery life with this battery. Plus, this computer has ISV certification for many of the top 3D modeling and engineering programs in the world, um, as well as the manufacturers. So that includes uh, companies like Autodesk, Graphisoft, Enscape, and more. So you know you're getting a laptop that's been tested and certified to get the job done in those programs. So I will link to more information about this laptop in the notes down below if you want to learn more. All right, so first off, you need to think about what kind of rendering you're going to create. So everyone has a different use case for the kinds of rendering programs that they're going to use. If you're a landscape architect, your needs are going to be different than if you're a landscape or an interior designer. If you create more animations, then you're going to have different needs than if you're creating just a bunch of still images. So you really need to ask yourself, what is the primary thing that I'm going to be using this program for? Whether that's interior renders, whether that's exterior renders, you really kind of need to have an idea because that's really going to drive your selection of a rendering program. All right, so another thing to consider when you're looking at rendering engines is if you want something that has real-time real capabilities or not. So this has gotten a little bit more complicated because a lot of programs have both a real-time functionality as well as a path tracing functionality. But basically what this means is a lot of rendering programs now have the ability for you to actually like jump into the scene and move around live. So Inkscape, Twinmotion, Lumion are all programs where you actually move around and the image actually live updates from inside of the program. Um, so it uses a lot of hardware intensive type stuff in order to do that. We'll talk about hardware in a second. But what that does is that allows you to see your changes that you're making in real time, which can be really valuable. Um, a lot of them, Inkscape is a great example, automatically update. Whenever you make a change in your SketchUp model, it'll update in your rendering as well, which can be a huge time saver. So if you're going to create a lot of different renderings or something like that, a real time engine is probably something that's worth looking into. It is worth noting that a lot of the more traditional path tracing type engines, while they're a little bit slower, they do do a little bit better job calculating the way that light bounces, giving you more realistic reflections and other things like that. But this gets even more complicated because now this is becoming something where a lot of programs offer both. So for example, Twin Motion's new version offers both a path tracing mode where you can actually like trace the bounces of light as well as the real time mode. You can render either way. V-Ray um, traditionally has been more of a path tracing engine, but with NV Ray, it also has the V-Ray Vision real-time engine. So you can actually click a button and fly around in real-time in your rendered engine with 
V-Ray. So just something to look into, like what kind of real-time functionality do you want? If anything, do you have the hardware to support that? And um, do you need to be able to see changes as they update other things like that? All things you need to think about um, and consider when you're looking at rendering engines. All right, so third is going to be your budget. And so like it or not, different programs cost different things. And so you really need to have an idea of what you're willing to spend. So I guess the first question I would ask is, does the program have a one-time fee? or does it have a recurring monthly fee? So programs like V-Ray, for example, have a one-time fee, and then I think you have to pay for updates, while programs like Inkscape, on the other hand, have a monthly recurring fee. So you pay a certain amount of, you pay a certain amount of money every month in order to access the program. So Lumion is another example of a program where you pay kind of a higher fee one time, and you get a version of a program, and then in the future, um, if there are any updates, you're gonna have to pay to update, but it's not like a monthly recurring fee or anything like that. So you need to have an idea of how you're willing to pay for the program as well as how much money you're willing to spend because that's going to drive your decision. So another thing that's going to be really important is your hardware. So first thing you need to think about is operating system. So if you have a Mac, then the programs that are going to be available is going to be different than if you have a PC. So you need to make sure that the program that you're trying to get works for your operating system. So for example, Inkscape doesn't run on Mac. So you can't use that on a Mac computer. Twin Motion currently does. So if you have a Mac computer, Twin Motion is going to be a better fit than Inkscape is. I think V-Ray runs on Mac. Um, I don't believe Lumion does. So that's something you need to look into is does this even work on my operating system? So another thing you need to be aware of is a lot of the real-time programs are gonna have higher um, hardware requirements. So you're gonna have to have a nicer graphics card, usually like a gaming level graphics card. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have a fast processor. You're going to want to make sure that you have more RAM. So those are all things that are going to make the programs run better. And even if you're using a program like V-Ray or Twilight Render or something like that, then they're still going to make your rendering run faster. So the more powerful your hardware, the faster your renderings are going to go. So I made a whole video on picking a computer for real-time rendering um, on my other channel, which I will link to in the notes down below. So you also need to think about if you're going to be creating still images or videos. Um, because still images and videos require different tools, right? So for example, um, if you use like a Twin Motion or a Lumion, you're going to have tools in there that allow you to like mass animate cars and people walking and other things like that. Um, while other programs, you don't necessarily have that. And then the other thing to think about there as well is um, some programs allow you to animate the movement of objects differently than others. So you do get more control over those people walking and cars moving in something like a Lumion or a Twin Motion, where an Inkscape isn't really going to give you the ability to animate those things. So it will animate the movement of like trees and you can animate your camera movement, but actual animation of moving objects isn't necessarily going to be something that you can do in that program. So you can create animations in something like a V-Ray, but again, like having people walking and the moving context and things like that isn't necessarily something that you're going to get. So you need to think about if you're going to be just creating animations where the camera moves or if you need to create animations where people are actually walking and moving around. So D5 Render is another example of a tool that allows you to animate people walking and cars moving, other things like that. All right, so another question you need to ask yourself is what assets do you need to have available for your renderings? So I'm going to use a landscape architect as an example. If you're a landscape architect, you're going to be adding a lot of plants and trees and other things like that to your renderings. So you probably want to pick a rendering engine that kind of has a deep library of that vegetation. So um, as of right now, Lumion, for example, probably has the biggest library of trees and other context models that are kind of render ready. Um, other programs like a Twin Motion or an Inkscape or also V-Ray are going to have a library of different trees designed for rendering as well. But you just need to look and see like does this have the actual context models that I need? Because one of the frustrating things about rendering can be if you have to go track if you actually have to go to an external source and bring those models in, that's going to be a little bit painful. So you just want to make sure as much as possible the context models that you want to use are already built into whatever software you pick. So in this case, um, again, probably Lumion has the deepest library there, but then um, you do have like Twin Motion, D5, the 
um, Inkscape and V-Ray all have libraries of render-ready models that you can use as well. You may just want to look into those and make sure they have what you need. All right, and then another great thing to ask is what kind of documentation and support does this program have? So. Um, when you get a rendering engine, especially when you're new, it's really hard to learn when you first start off, right? You need a lot of like learning resources, examples, other things like that, so you can see what people are doing in order to get the results that you're doing. So I would recommend before picking an engine, just go out there and look at some of the tutorial material that's available. The documentation from the program is usually available for free, and just see if it feels like something that you're going to be able to actually work with. And I would also make sure that whatever program you're looking at actually has some kind of a forum or something like that where if you get stuck you can actually go and ask questions because that's going to be something that you're going to be doing a lot when you're learning a new program. So you want to make sure the learning resources are out there um, so that you can actually learn to create what you want to create. So lastly, try it out. So a lot of these programs have free trials of some sort or another where you can actually either reach out to the company or um, a lot of them just have a trial that you can download like Twin Motion. You can download an almost fully featured trial version um, in order to actually see exactly how the program works. So I would recommend if possible before making any kind of a purchase, see if you can get a free trial and actually try it and make sure that it's a program that you actually like working in. So some programs work better for some people than for others. So if you can find that trial and give it a try and say, okay, this actually feels like it's going to be the right fit for me, then I would recommend starting off with that. So you can see why this would be tricky. Every one of these questions has a different answer for a different person. So there's no like, what's the best rendering engine? It's what's the best fit for you. And when you're looking at this, um, be honest with yourself on what your needs actually are and what you're actually going to be able to produce because that thought process is gonna help you pick the rendering program that you need. But if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.